are straps now. Now, I'm going to show you how I like to do them. It's not necessarily how it's written in the pattern. How it's written in the pattern is absolutely fine. My problem with that is that I find it quite difficult sometimes to match up two pieces that are perfectly cut, that are cut. So I kind of do it, I, I, it's a cheat way if you like. Now I've cut two of the strap pieces and then I have a scrap piece of faux leather that's, that's just a little bit bigger than I need. These are actually longer than I need them to be as well. These are about 16 inches, so they are a wee bit longer than they need to be. Um, and that's all fine. In fact, one's a lot longer than it needs to be. So I've cut two and I've used my little template that's within the pattern to shape one end. You only need to shape one end of, of these two. Um, I've added, this is quite a, although it's quite a thick faux leather, it's a chieftain faux leather, it's still got a bit of flexibility to it. So I've added a little bit of Decoville light to the back of each of these. Um, that just gives the strap a little bit more structure. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac glue, or any glue will do, or a, even a, um, a glue stick would work. You sort of print stick, or you know the sort of stuff that you use for for school, um, Elmer's, any any glue really. Just popping a little bit on the back of both of them, so I might as well do this one while I'm at it. Looks like my glue needs thinning out a little bit, it's a bit cloggy. You just need a little bit, just enough to stop it from jigging about when you stick it all together. And with my scrap panel wrong side up, I'm going to put my strap onto that scrap panel wrong sides together. And I'm just gonna kind of press it down where I put that bit of glue on it. All that does is stop it skidding around. And I'm going to stick the second one on. They're not slap bang next to each other, there's a gap between them. So you can kind of see, it's just a scrap of faux leather. It's the same color as the other, as the other side, so um, it's all good. And now I'm going to top stitch down um, from the square end, down through, around the curved end, and then back up the other side. So I'm going to do that on the first one, I'm stitching at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Take it slowly because these will be visible. and slowly I find it's easier to just hand crank around there simply because it's very easy to shoot straight off of it so just hand cranking one stitch at a time just allows you to have control um, it's easy to lose control sometimes when you're going around a curve I haven't got my um, stitch length well, my stitch length is three and three quarters, so it's not what I would normally use for top stitching. If you use a bigger, a longer stitch length, then when you get to that curve, it will end up looking slightly jagged when you stitch because the stitches will be too big for the, for the curve. So you want it to look like a nice curve. So having gone down one side, Again, still using that eighth of an inch seam allowance.
I'm going to do the other one. So exactly the same process. All the way down one side. off the end of it this is I, it normally I wouldn't hang crank around a curve because I know I can I know how to get my 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 own machine to do one stitch at a time this one does but I'm not as confident doing it on this just because I'm not as I'm not familiar with the machine it's a new machine to me and it's I'm just I'd rather be err on the side of caution and there's nothing wrong with hand cranking um, especially to go around a curve like this because it will give you a much nicer finish than a wonky line. And then back up the other side. I try and keep a nice even tempo so I'm not going too quickly it's just kind of rhythmic it's, I find that my top stitching is poorer if I do that sort of stop start stop start judder 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 thing and there we have two straps stitched onto the um, scrap piece of faux leather. Um, when I say scrap, it's the same colour as the, as the front piece. But um, Now you can either use your rotary cutter or your scissors to trim away all the faux leather from the scrap piece, which will leave you with two very beautiful straps. Um, Whichever you feel more in control of. If you feel more in control of a rotary cutter, then use a rotary cutter. I'm just trying to show you that it's quite possible to do with scissors. I would usually use a rot rotary cutter. I don't use scissors for very much, if I'm, if I'm honest. one strap if you're going to use scissors make sure you use nice long um, cuts rather than sort of little tiny scissory cuts you, you want a nice long cut and keep your scissors the blade of your scissors right up to the very edge of the strap that you've stitched on. Now these can be um, edge coated if you want to. I'm actually going to leave these because I quite like, this has got a, a slightly lighter white backing. And I quite like the, um, the white stripe, a bit of an accent on the side of these. This um, backing on this faux leather doesn't unravel particularly so um, you don't end up with a sort of fluffy edge, which you can do with some if you're not careful. So there we go. We now have two straps. I'm going to measure them because I want them to be 15 and a half long. 
and I can cut off the excess because I made them too long. Just make sure that they're both the same length. Perfect. Now, if you're starting to think, oh gosh, I've done an awful lot, I don't seem to be getting anywhere. What's nice to do now is sort of thread things up a little bit, kind of get a view for what things are going to look like. So I've got my front here with the two apertures. If I bring my straps through from the back and you see that they fit just perfectly into those apertures. They're not, they're not ever so tight, but they're not loose either. Then you can pop your flap underneath just between the two apertures I like to sort of tuck it over and that gives you a kind of an idea of how your bag is going to look really smart really happy and it makes you feel like you're actually getting there there's lots of stages in this particular pattern but none of them take very long and it's quite repetitive you're doing the same thing over and over again but when you start to look at like this you suddenly think oh it's getting there so that's your straps and how to make them